Welcome back. You're just in time for our final hour together right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Now, earlier in the show, we dived into the dynamic of vulnerability in the workspace. Now we're putting the focus on being vulnerable in your own relationship and what that looks like when you're being taken for granted. Now, you may do things for your partner every day out mm. of love or act that brings, you know, it brings you joy. But what happens when your partner expects from you and takes advantage of it? Is that fair? Those are some of the questions we are asking today. And then we, we have experts. We, we do just, we have just bring experts. experts all over, okay? <laughs> so now we've got a, a registered wellness counselor from Living in Purpose Counseling. Karen van Skaltvek is here, and husband and wife duo. We've got Rishka Barnes over here, and Camille Wachi, who has joined us here for a lovely conversation. <laughs> so we've got actual, we've got experienced people, and people who are experiencing the experience that the experienced person has. It's all about Boom. giving everyone <laughs> that amazing. experience. Yeah, it's, cool. it's great. Oh. Well, Karen, I'm going to start off with you. I mean, you don't expect this from your partner, or at least I'm hoping you don't expect this from your partner, but what do you do in a moment where you feel like your partner's taking advantage of your vulnerability, your soft side, or perhaps, you know, your love language? I think it's important to, you know, not shy away from bringing it up with them. And some people look at being soft as a bad thing. I don't think it is a bad thing. It's you know, you need to have the good, you need to have the bad, you need to have the soft, you need to have assertive people. But it's also important to let your partner know how you're feeling. Because if you don't let them know what is going on, they're not going to understand. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to constantly be an expectation for you to do it. So don't expect them to just know what is going on in your mind or understand what you are feeling. Tell them, be verbal about it. I think that's an important factor to know and to note in a relationship. Well, now we have the experience right next to you. <laughs> uh, just, just on that, I, I do want to just ask, just from this lovely couple over here, right? W when you hear those words about, you know, you want to be verbal, I mean, it is yes. really easier said than done because yes. there are parts of you that almost want to protect your partner from yeah. certain things. And then there are parts of you that also would like to protect yourself yes. from certain sort of vulnerabilities in the relationship. So, I mean, how difficult is it to navigate that space between you and a partner? This is somebody that doesn't particularly know your context unless you've been with them for a while. Yeah. So, how have you navigated that, that sharing? Communication. Communication is very <laughs> All important. All the time, communicating. But now, what type of... Because I so know communication, like, communication is a big thing. Communication on, on like, on Alice. like every level. <laughs> From even, like, when he's in the lounge or something and I'm in the room, even if we're sending like reels about other couples, <laughs> which really helps. <laughs> you know, it's just to know that we're not the only ones going through this sort of things. Yeah. Um, Makes so it like, a lot easier yeah, for us and to like understand. And things like it's okay that. to be vulnerable yeah. and understand how other people act also. It's like, okay, we're not the only ones. We're yeah. fine. <laughs> so, so are, are you saying that you overshare? So let's just yes, say something yes, is. We do. We if, speak about everything. If something's tough at work, Yes. And you don't want your partner to feel like anything's unstable. Like, no. I want to ask you the hard question now. <laughs> yes, yes. Are you okay to share yes. those sorts of things and say, yes. like, look here, I'm not sure if we are going to be good? No, we, we will always ask yes. the question. Love it. Like, I can, like, sense if there's something wrong with him already. The moment he walks in, I'm like, how was work today? So, like, so we, he'll, like, sit down and we'll discuss everything. Wow. Luckily for us. <laughs> I love that you use tools like reels and memes because yeah. i've received many of them be like this is you <laughs> yeah, the that's the that's the week. so we be like face each other they will laugh yeah. like that was us <laughs> but it helps because i mean exactly. i'm someone that sometimes just needs a bit more time to process yeah and it's nice to see there are reels out there that demonstrates yeah. that that can yes. shed light to the person it's that wants to social media <laughs> it does i love that you're using those tools other than social media are there perhaps other tools you've 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 implemented in your relationship to help foster that safe environment to be vulnerable with one another. Spending time together without our kids. <laughs> Very important, yeah. Because sometimes we forget, you know? Yeah. Like we forget us. So um, we went out the weekend and then it's like we like rekindle things again. Okay. Yeah. It's like we're not only parents. <laughs> Always need time for yourself to yeah. just to be free a little bit then come back to the point where, oh, okay, I am a person. <laughs> yeah, I'm not just a father, I'm not just a mother. We need to be able to be ourselves, to express the way we feel. Yeah. 
let loose a little bit. I, I think what you're trying to say, I just let me try and find the Oxford Dictionary term. You must continue chasing each other. <laughs> in the relationship. Definitely. Uh, but of course, our expert will be weighing in on communicating vulnerability in a relationship in the next couple of minutes. So make sure you stay there as we continue entertaining you on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It's my Feel Good Breakfast Show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso, and we love getting vulnerable with you. We've got an expert, Karen, who is alongside our amazing couple, Arishka and Camille, who is here to just share. And we're going to make them share, all right? Because here's the question. <laughs> Is my partner taking advantage of my vulnerability? That is a big question. And I mean, the thing is to our expert, Karen, I have to ask, you know, the signs that your partner is taking advantage of your vulnerability, what should we be looking out for that perhaps you've seen within your practice? Um, I think, you know, as the person that is experiencing that in yeah. their relationship, you, you can ask yourself, is my partner dismissing my emotions, my feelings? Are they using what I share with them against me, um, specifically in, you know, like an argument? Yes. I think it's easy to throw that in somebody's face when you're having an argument. Okay. So that they make you feel like they are in control. They have the power over you. Yes. Um, if you can answer yes to, are you the one trying to keep the peace all the time? Are you the mm. one going out of your way to apologize? Yeah. Those are all signs of being taken, ad taken advantage of in your relationship, you know, that you don't feel safe enough. So yes. that's what you're going to experience. And those are the moments, unfortunately, <clears throat> that will, will dampen the fluidity of communication in vulnerability. Yes. Because next time it happens, you're not going to be so open to share because you know what the mm. repercussions are. Exactly. And I think some people actually know that and <laughs> hold it over their partners. Yes. yes. Uh, which is a big problem. So for you two, the lovely couple. <laughs> so have there been moments where, let's just say, and I want you to be honest here, mm. I've been trying to get to you guys <laughs> so often but okay here it comes a little problem moment mm. where somebody shares and perhaps the other person's not having it how have you worked through those types of times unless you are the perfect couple <laughs> and we need to find another couple to talk to <laughs> so we have more drama on the show I'm kidding the but how couple. have you worked through that I think we give each other time yeah. yes if we argue over over yeah. anything yes uh, who I mean we? generally in the time she will pop me on yeah. whatsapp like yo <laughs> it's not on. Yeah, a long message. <laughs> we said he kept us uh, after our meeting. And then, yeah, we we'll just, through it. Yeah. I wanted to ask about that as well. And then maybe the expert can help here. So I find that many couples enjoy resolving issues through What's something that? that's more digital mm. than face-to-face. -face. All right? Is that healthy? I need to ask this because... Surely you're still addressing the problem. There's still a two-way communique. Uh, it's not face-to-face. -face. Mm. Do you think that is constructive? Like, you can be as honest as you want to right now. From a personal perspective, yes. as well as professional, I would say it's not constructive. Um, but I do also understand that people have different ways of communicating and being yeah. able to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, I think for me personally, I like to communicate on a face-to-face -face level. So mm. there's no room for miscommunication. Yeah. There's no room uh -huh. for, you know, judging the person in a way that maybe that's not how they're coming across. So the perceptions can be... Deceived, and there can be assumptions placed on it if it is done on social media or over yeah. WhatsApp, for okay. example. So yeah. I think it's important to find your way of communicating. But for me personally, face to face, let's sit down after we've both cooled off, have the conversation, mm. share what's bothering us, just be completely transparent in that yeah. moment. I mean, any strategies yeah. that you use, like maybe I know relationships sometimes have this rule of thumb. Like the seven minute rule. Oh. You know, where one speaks seven minutes and the other one speaks seven minutes no, and you resolve we, it. Well. We, Do you have any strategy that, like we're that? We're not that formal. We just speak it out. Yeah. You just speak it out. Yeah, we just speak over like you oh, were wrong, when he cooks. Get out. <laughs> then the food comes and then we discuss. <laughs> <laughs> food is actually cook. a good way that of communicating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows the food is the way to get to me. <laughs> so, not. just in terms of, I mean, these two, they love each other. <laughs> It's so unfortunate. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm kidding. No, I love, I love the fact there's such great love, and, and this is a testament to what happens when you do communicate often, yeah. whether it be good stuff or bad stuff. You have to be mm. in each other's spaces yeah. when you it comes to, to the vulnerability. You, you can't only be there for the good times, yes. yeah, let's be honest. Definitely. But for any couples who are struggling with communicating their vulnerability, like, do you have any advice for them? Because vulnerability is exactly what it is. It makes yeah. you vulnerable. Mm. You feel 
weakened by that exposure. So how do you go about using the right type of communication to share your vulnerability? Are there any little strategies or little hacks you want to give any couples today? I think, you know, the first thing that you need to understand as a couple is that vulnerability is essential for a couple to, or any relationship to thrive. Yeah. You know, it builds that intimacy, it builds the trust, it builds closeness within between two people. So I think the first step is understanding what vulnerability actually brings to your relationship before yes. you can try and open yourself up to it. Mm -hmm. And I think just being transparent. You know, a lot of people are scared to open up. Yes. There's a fear of being judged in that moment, but it's about pushing through that uncomfortable yeah. phase or mm. that uncomfortable feeling. So even if you're going to upset the person, just sit down, have the conversation, say, look, I'm going to share something, no judgment, you can take it how you want it. Um, that is the essence of being vulnerable. And if you're not going to do it, you're never going to know how to go about it. Yeah. It's never yeah. going to be evident in your relationship. Yeah. And I think also, sorry to cut you off, um, establishing boundaries as well. So maybe have a keyword and say, okay, best friend, let's have a sit down and speak. Mm. So when they hear the word best friend, there's no, so like, tense. growled up. Yeah, it's so not tense. tense. It's like, okay, she's going to speak about something important. <laughs> I need to be open and ah. to hear this. I find in relationships, it's not best friend. It's your first name. Uh, it's not babe. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's dangerous. <laughs> You know, that's, that's it, which is crazy. But uh, <laughs> just in terms of you two, identifying how you communicate. Uh, how did you go about doing that? I know that you, when you're with somebody, you start learning. But, like, are there any cues that would tell you that, you know, there's a certain way that he communicates and maybe you need to look at that? So without going into, like, the love languages, mm. but, you know, developing that rapport between the two of you, like, what are, what are the, some of the things that are quite revealing about the way he deals with stuff versus the way you deal yeah. with stuff? I think we're still individual p p people and yeah. we have to remind each other that, like, we're not the same. <laughs> and because I think it comes from experience, yes. from previous relationships also on what not to do in your current relationship. So you True. learn from experience, you know? Yeah, so it definitely. goes like that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and what makes it easier is, um, again, communicating, but in, in other ways, like going out and sp spending time with family. It's a crazy thing that family can also resolve, <laughs> resolve, the, yeah. resolve the issues without even knowing it. Also, sometimes it's nice to speak to someone else about it in mm. terms yeah. of... Maybe you just want to chat to a friend or yes. a closer friend that might... You listen to the you. issues and it's yeah. not so bad. <laughs> Makes the news is not so like, bad. Okay. It's a lot worse off than me. <laughs> yeah, apparently that's, that's the, the, the key. You yeah. know, I had a comedian tell me the other day the best way to find out that your relationship is yes. fine is just to go out with people who fight. Yeah, <laughs> the best way to bring you guys together. That's great. That was actually Stuart watch. Taylor that told me that. <laughs> Lovely guy. Oh, my word. But, okay, we might have more to unpack. And I know that this is a big dynamic topic. So maybe just hang around for a second before we get into any of the other things. But, I mean, with all the stress, uh, it can have a negative impact on your gut health as well, which is one of those things. Uh, that little feeling, you know, they say the gut feeling sometimes. It's more than just a feeling. And I think we need to just explore that for a second. It's my feel-good Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Express here in S3, and we still have our expert, Karen, here. In fact, I kept him here. So there's a couple of <laughs> Rishka and Camille. I just wanted to make sure that we are unpacking this properly, and if you missed it, uh, the past two occasions, we're chatting about vulnerability in a relationship and also around some of the ways your partner can communicate and obviously articulate their feelings to one another when it comes to vulnerability and, also, of course, to avoid taking advantage of vulnerability in a relationship as well. Now, thanks for your comments. I just want to take a peek at this one that you sent over. Thank you. And it was a comment that came up from Ursula. And Ursula said, when my kids were little, I used to put them to bed by eight. When they got older, I gave them a book to read. Uh, my hubby and I could then spend some quality time together and catch up with the day's happenings. Now, that type of time is vitally important. So for you two, finding the time to be a couple and not just a couple mm. of parents, separating those two, because you are in a relationship. Yeah. I did mention the chasing earlier. <laughs> I did. Together. So finding that time, how important is it to find that time? And are you trying to your best to find enough time to be a couple versus a couple of parents? I feel like it comes naturally for us. <laughs> Luckily, again. Because you're the perfect couple. <laughs> ah. 
<laughs> every day, basically, put the kids to bed. Yes. Try to catch a movie, try to just relax, take a load off. Yeah. Have that time to speak to each other, catch up. Oh, how was your day? Mm. How was your whatever her shoot, or maybe I had an event on or yeah. something. So it's very important for us to, as a couple, to understand, oh, look, where one or the other had a difficult day, we need to speak about it, we yeah. need to understand how we overcome these things in a regular, on our own, as well as a couple, if you know what I mean. That's so, <laughs> Yeah, because that comment spoke to the fact that like you have to separate somehow. The kids have yeah. to go to bed. Yes. What happens thereafter? Yeah. You know, you're not just in the relationship for parenting. Yeah. You are then it for each other, and you have to show each other that, which is important. So, to our counselor, you know, let's talk about kids for a second and go to a point where instilling that vulnerability and that openness in your kids. I think this uh, taps into it as well, because remember the way you argue as a couple, the way you communicate your emotions and your vulnerability essentially has an observation-based effect on your kids yeah. mm. and the way they start acting on their Definitely. own vulnerability. So that particular process, how important is it for, for parents to be aware of that level of their vulnerability? I think the important thing is in the heat of the moment, when if there is an argument happening, I think it's important to note not to do that in front of your kids. Yes. Um, because then you're teaching them that it's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's no boundary in between mm. your relationship and then including them into your, your relationship, you know. Your relationship with them is completely separate, so they shouldn't be involved in mm. your relationship as a couple. Yeah. So have the conversation behind closed doors and, you know, when you've made up, when you've spoken about it, let them see that. Yes, we may, might have had an argument, but we also spoke through it. Now we can work together. We treat you no differently. You know, it's, I think it's just about understanding that, yeah. that boundary, <laughs> the, the difference between the two relationships. I like that you said that. I like that you said that there should be a boundary between <laughs> this relationship as parents and your relationship with your child yes. as a parent, which yeah. is a very powerful thing to note, because I think that sometimes within a smaller closed sort of setting mm. you know you want to have it out you want to vocalize and like let's the kids too young to understand yeah but i think that research shows that kids are emotionally perceptive no, yeah. they feel everything <laughs> in the home yeah. 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 exactly you understand <laughs> they they have that perception so it's the way you 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 spend time with one another yeah mm -hmm. the way you that argue and get through things showcase your vulnerability that is going to have an effect on your kids which yeah. is just so powerful and i mean are there ways that that you two try your best to do that? We do, so our place is really open, so even if we argue, our kids will see us. Oh, they will see, there, there we go. <laughs> they but they would also But in the note. same breath, we, from the beginning, we make it a point that after we do have an yes. argument, we are, you just, okay, he doesn't argue with me, I argue with him. <laughs> and, then, and then he will just hug me, and, yeah. but my little one, our children will see that, and I think they don't feel like we are angry because <laughs> like there's that and then we can still be okay <laughs> and, and to the counselor do you think that that is something that a child would deem as the resolution was a hug which perhaps would instill <laughs> that sort of loving resolution to conflict yes um i think you know as a as humans we tend to want to storm off or yes. ignore the person for a couple of hours but i think it's also important to know that your kids are watching you in yeah. that moment and a healthy relationship will decide okay for the sake of our kids, even if you must just fake it for that mm, moment, yeah. give that hug, give that kiss, so they don't feel unsafe in that space. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, I think it's just just about navigating around that and understanding your role as a parent, but also your role as a partner. I've loved this conversation. <laughs> Honestly, I have. Um, next time we're going to get an arguing couple, <laughs> uh, but this is fine. No, but you two are just such a testament to what it feels like to be a unit, and I want to yeah. uh, salute you for that <laughs> and celebrate you for that. Yes. It's been amazing chatting to you. Thank you. And to Karen, our counsellor, thanks for all the great pearls of wisdom as well. Thank you. We've been very vulnerable today, and we want to <laughs> say thank you so much for sharing your vulnerability online, and we're going to continue these conversations because we do really, really care about your relationship, especially here <laughs> on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Stick with us.